you talk about the Yankees, I would have felt that they would have at least won one of the games if J.A. Happ hadn't contracted hand, foot, and mouth disease, which apparently is the new hip disease for New York sports teams. But beyond that, the four-game series was going to be tough from the outset, and while I'm disappointed in the sweep by the Red Sox, I'm not entirely surprised. The Red Sox have two MVP candidates on their team in the form of Mookie Betts and J.D. Martinez. Betts, who I think is the favorite to win the AL MVP. You also have Chris Sale, who, while he didn't pitch in the series, is one of the favorites for the AL Cy Young Award. And on top of that, aside from, I'd say, center field and catching, the Red Sox have a circular lineup, which, if you know me, Joe, I am an advocate of having a very much circular lineup. As for the Hall of Fame, I think that's just generally a thing that happens in all the sports. Case in point, while I didn't paint him as a first ballot or third ballot or even fifth ballot Hall of Famer, I would have expected that Jorge Posada would have gotten into the Hall of Fame at some point on his ballot ticket and not be dropped off almost immediately. That said, there are measures like veterans committees that help with getting players who fall through the cracks that do deserve. This seems to always happen every year with every award, every Hall of Fame, regardless of the sport, that there seems to be snubs. And more and more you see every year there are calls for a sort of fan bout or some sort of fan participation to help pick these awards. But you can't always vote with your heart. Take the cases of guys like Jack Morris, who is a Hall of Fame pitcher, and one of the clutch postseason pitchers in MLB. It took him the whole term of his ballot to build up that fan base and get in. Mainly because while he has those great postseason moments, he also has one of the highest regular season ERAs of any Hall of Fame pitcher. And so it had to take those 10 years to groundswell to gain more and more fans and followings in the Writers Association that pick the MLB Hall of Fame ballot. Now think for a minute if this was a pure fan vote. Jack Morris is known for his performances on the Minnesota Twins, the Detroit Tigers, and the Toronto Blue Jays. Not in that order. In short, he's never played for any New York team, any Boston team, any Los Angeles or other California team, any team where there's a big population. And this is where the I see a problem lying into a pure fan vote. For fans who've never seen this guy pitch in person, never seen any of his postseason stuff, and only look at his stats and say they're great, but they're not great compared to other Hall of Famers, they could just write him off and he very well could be off the ballot in the first round, just like with Jorge Posada. And that is the danger that certain locations would not know to vote for this guy because they've never seen him and never seen how he played. And it could come to detriments of many players, especially players of Midwestern cities who don't go to the postseason at much or at all. Like, I mean, look at the recent example of Joey Votto not being recognized by a cub security guard and a fan having to say hey that's joey vado let him in he's a player we could see that on a hall of fame type level that said i do like the fan aspect i'm a big advocate of the fan ballots for picking all stars and i would like to see that come for awards and hall of fame just maybe like a 15, 20, 25% weight compared to the writers. Not enough to overwhelm and choose which way a vote's going to go, but just enough to have a good amount of influence. And one quick thing before I go, Joe, it looks like the Yankees did listen considering that they optioned Voight for Torres, so it's progress, I guess. Anyway, I'll catch you next week.